the suggestions from after the Stand Cup relaunch in Belfast last Wednesday was that it might come back next year as a knockout competition. I do know the secret that the current format probably hasn't captured everyone's imagination. But is that the way it's a foresee that going? No, I'd be asking a question. I'd be just happy to be in it next season, and if it was knockout over a two-leg affair, it wouldn't really wouldn't really bother me as long as we don't lose the competition because I think it is a good competition. You know, it's it's, it's kind of a bit the start of mode because of the seasons up there and the seasons there don't don't run in tandem. So um, it's the best we're going to get, and I'm hoping that it will be retained in whatever format that the sponsors chose and the, the powers to be, both north and south. If we can come together and work out some formula that will be, you know, that will be fair to both both leagues. I think I, I think I certainly be all for it. Yeah, I would be. What, what are you expecting from the Army Division this season? There's no Cork and Derry and some of the teams from Dublin. It's going to be a bit probably different uh, compared to the past. Well, it's hard to know because you know a league without Cork and Derry is probably unthinkable. Um, but obviously, you know it's well documented whether they're not in the league. Um, How's it going to be? It's going to be no easier or harder or difficult or whatever. It's you know looking at Bray, uh, they've obviously going to be given time there to try and sign a couple of players, and I'm sure uh, between Pat Devlin and Eddie Gormley they'll put a few rabbits out of the hat uh, with their contacts. Um, it'll be a very very difficult league because pr probably look at it now and say Rovers, Bowes, Fingal, they're everybody's favourites, to, and they, they they probably will end up fighting it out at the end. The rest of us. It's going to be nip and tuck. There's nothing between the teams. It's going to be really dog fight like it always is. Every every match will be keenly contested, and there'll be no there'll be no easy games. That's for sure. Regardless, you know, just people are looking at UCD, but you you look at UCD, the brand of football they played to get them promotion this year. I think they're going to be a great addition to the league. Okay, they don't bring much in terms of attendance and so on, but I think I think they'll be a positive. Looking at Bray the other night, they lead a few bodies in, which I'm sure they'll get. And after that, then it's going to be dog eat dog. Well, what, what are your own ambitions for the season in the league? Well, obviously, you know, trying to improve in last season, that has to be, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, after that, well, we're obviously going to try win every match we play, whether it's, it's Atlanta Cup or League Cup or whatever. Um, but we certainly hope that, you know, if we can have a little bit look on the Inslee front that we could certainly win a cup. I think the league, you know, to be realistic, we can all have ambitions and targets and goals to aim for. But being realistic, I think if we could if we could finish in the top top four or five and win a cup, I think it'd be a great season here. Yeah, and I mean, the, the cup thing is it, it's an astonishing record here. They've got this big, hasn't won the cup in so long. It's, it's kind of a perennial question for managers, I mean, whether it's a, a big thing would be for the club to win it. Well, only for the hand that Brian Flood uh, in Lansdowne Road, I think they would have won the cup. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I think they would have won the double that year. My memory says me right. But um, now, something that we're very, very conscious of here, I think I said it before, it's the Holy Grail here. And uh, actually, a neighbour of mine, Roddy Whelan Senior, was. Um, was on the last team to won the cup here, so it would be a great, it'd be a great achievement. Uh, but any, you know, if it's league cup or whatever, we're not too fussy at this moment. We just want to try and do the best we can and bring back, bring back, you know, the core value of this club. Um, we had a supporters meeting earlier on, and um, it was spelled out to me really what the supporters expect, and I'd be very disappointed if we couldn't deliver on that. What, what is that? Well, they want to see Pat's playing with a bit of, a bit of. Um, Bit of forward and determination, and you know, have a bit of pride in the wearing of the jersey again. I think uh, that was lost over the last while. Um, uh, if you look at Pat's Jordan Brian Kerr's time here, they were really a community-based club, and that has kind of drifted away a little bit. I think looking at it from the outside, and that's why you know it's important. That I said earlier that we kind of handpicked the players that we were going to bring to the club because we think. They have a combination of all the things I'm looking for and the lads that we kept from last season. There had to be some continuity. I think that was very, very important that we kept the lads that we did. And unfortunately, as I said earlier, also there was one or two more we would have liked to kept as well, but it wasn't to be. So we're very, very happy with what we have here. We won't set the world on fire, but we will 
we will be giving a hundred percent effort every week. I mean, that's all we can do is give a hundred percent, and we're hoping that's with the other uh, con attributes we have here, and uh, that we'll that we'll we'll have a good season. Jamie, can I ask you just uh, what, what would you say to that? That maybe the, the, the wasn't that proud and the passion showing the team over On a personal note, I can only talk for myself. I've loved playing for Pats. This will be my third season, and every time I'm going out to the pitch, I'm giving one hundred and ten percent. I think the supporters know that. As a group last year, we probably let ourselves down. Um, whatever it was, on paper, we looked like a great uh, team. Everyone would say that a lot. But I think it was a lesson for everybody last year. Um, reputations don't mean anything, particularly in this league. Anytime anyone seems to think they're better than they are, they get that they're quickly knocked down, you know? Um, I would agree with Pete that last year, we let the club down, the players that were here. But at the same time, we didn't get relegated. It wasn't the end of the world to see can have them seasons. And I'd be looking forward now and be very enthusiastic on the, the season ahead. I think it's going to be a, a really good season. Like Pete was saying earlier, a lot of doom and gloom around. And I think we just need to focus on the positives now, now and aim for some success with this club. Shane, can I ask uh, what attracted you to the club? Um, well, in the off season, uh, John Gill rang me up, and he put the proposal to me, and he he talked very well with Pat and I. Well, I know Pat's a big club anyway, like, but his plans and Pete's plans just made up my mind for me. They told me the players that were coming in, the players that were staying, and it sounded really well, like. So the job offers from anywhere, anywhere else? I had one or two offers right from other famous clubs, but wasn't the not St. Pat's like. St. Pat's are a beer club and the other ones that were uh, after me, so they so I was going to jump for St. Pat's. Did they come up against Galway as well like, early on in the season? Yeah, I uh, have a few friends to be back there, like, but once the game <laughs> once the game goes on, it's out the window. Like. So can I ask you about midfield again? Have you seen them in the last two weeks? I've seen them last night, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. What, what, what did you make of, of, of them? Well, um, they're very big, physically, um, well organised. Um, they were playing in a local derby against Crusaders. It was a bit of fire and brimstone stuff at times, but um, you can see their quality. Um, uh, the, the players who kind of caught my eye were the, the, the two strikers, Chris Allen and Peter Thompson, and they have a young player, um, Garrett is his name in midfield, very, very good. Good organised uh, all round team, and we're going to have to be at our best to beat them. Uh, it's going to be a good challenge for us. But, uh, yeah, it was good to see them in the flesh because we had a few match reports on them, but it's nothing like going to see a real live game. Mm -hmm. And where do you put, I mean, a couple of years ago, they would have played, really kind of played up going into Stanford Cup matches the gap between the two leagues and how everyone down here was full time and whatever. There's been a lot of change in the last couple of years. Where, where do you put the two kind of the top teams in the two leagues against each other now? Well I would still think the Bohemians would be the overall best team in the country and what I now now must you must remember I only seen Linfield playing once so yeah, you sure. know where we've seen Bohemians quite a lot. Uh Shamrock Rovers now you know are making great improvements. I mean I think last season they you know they've done really well under Michael O'Neill and I would expect them uh, I think we hard this year too. So at the moment, I'd have to say, um, from what I've seen, uh, Bohemians would be, would be the would be the top team, followed closely by Linfield. So it's kind of it, it, there, it's, there's not much in it. Like no, but I think Bows have the edge. You know, mm. although you know Bows are completely full time. I think Linfield have six full time players, so they're a bit of both. Something like Rovers. Uh, and that's why I think you know the, the Bowes team have there's a core there that's been together for a while, and you know they've 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 had great success. And I just think they have the edge uh, overall. Thank you.